Hello the folks, it is TIJ Gaming and welcome back to the Football Manager 2021 series Conquering the Euro with Everton and boy have we been doing well. So I can guarantee we're going to come back, get camera shy and bugger it all up today. But in today's episode we have a game at the King Power Stadium against Leicester City. You would think we'd get three points from that. They're in broad, not I wouldn't say in a relegation battle, they're ten points clear. They're not really playing for much and I think we can get three points there. But then we've got a Merseyside derby at Goodison Park. And that derby is more important than ever, and we'll come to that in just a minute. But you can see, we are currently fifth in the Premier League table. Our stature has not changed. However, our closeness to the top four really has. We are on goal difference behind Manchester City for fourth. If we go and beat Leicester today, we'll be only four points behind Liverpool. Bear in mind, they've played one more game than us, so... We could seriously end up finishing third in the league if things go well for us. And the reason that that has happened is that we are currently on a 10-match unbeaten run. So the last time you guys saw us was that brilliant performance against Man City, followed up by the Tottenham win. We then went and played against Crystal Palace. We beat them by two goals to one. We scored two in the first half. Leonardo Campano, one of my former players at Wolves, getting one back, but that was okay. We dropped two points against Stoke. That was a disappointment. And we've had three draws in this period where I'm a bit disappointed. Not so much here with how we've conceded goals. But yeah, it was just one of those. A little bit like the Sheffield United game earlier on. Stoke come for a draw and they got one. However, we got back to winning ways again against West Ham um, on the 19th of Feb. I did think this one was going to be another problem. We got to the 70th minute. It was 0-0. But a double from Marcus Edwards and Deji Satona made it 2-0 and quite convincing in the end. And then... I have to applaud my players here. They did fantastically. 2-0 down against Leeds at half-time at Goodison Park. We scored two uh, in the first 12 minutes of the second half. So Toner again getting on the score sheet. He's scoring very regularly lately. Um, he's scored in four of the last five games. And going back, he scored in what? One, two, three, four, five. Five of the last seven, which is, which is mighty impressive, really. Um, so Tona and Almeida getting on the score sheet. We were helped out by a penalty in the 70th minute, which put us ahead. And luckily, Viviani made it 4-2 in 92 minutes to get a convincing win. What a win that was. What a three points. Then we rather annoyingly dropped two points against Southampton. This was very, very frustrating. We were 2 0 up 15 minutes in. Again, Deji Satona getting on the score sheet with Reese Nelson. And 83 minutes in, I thought, great. 2 0, 2 1 at most. We sat back and defended. Robert Bosnick scored in the 83rd minute, and I thought, well, this could be a bit worrying, but we got to 90 minutes before it's going to be okay. And we conceded the dreaded late goal. And we dropped two points. And obviously, without dropping those two points, we would now be above Manchester City. But these things happen. And we also drew 2-2 against Wolves. Wolves played very well. Took the lead on two occasions. But Sam Atkinson played. Played very well. Got his second goal for the club. Um, and Deji Satona once again getting the goal to equalise for a second time. And then we've just about beat Norwich in the last match. We gave Joachim Yaranga his debut for the club after his free signing from um, Athletic Bilbao last year. He went out on loan to Real Sports in La Liga, but didn't get a game. And Marcus Edwards was out injured. I thought, oh, he's a decent player. We'll give him a go. And he managed to get himself sent off on his debut. Not the best start. Obviously, we sat back a bit after that, but a 91st minute corner and Diego Almeida won the game for us. So it's fair to say, probably in the last, I guess if you look at this, the last six matches, we've not done all that well, but on we're still unbeaten. As I said, we're on a 10-match unbeaten run. Um, seven wins and three draws. So what's that? That's 24 points out of 30. Um, and that is why we are only just behind Manchester City. Now, Man City have played this weekend. They drew 0-0 against Bournemouth. That is a big result for us. Obviously, us dropping points and getting draws isn't going to help us. But um, Man City have got Chelsea, West Ham, Tottenham. They've got some tough games in their last seven. We've got Liverpool and Leicester today. We've also got to play Manchester United, which won't be easy. But Bournemouth, tough game there in sixth. Newcastle, Sheffield United and the Villa. It could be a tough end to the season for us, but let's see what happens. Um, we've also potentially made a new transfer. And this is one where the, 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 scout, the scouts have done an absolutely fantastic job. They've gone out to Dubai here. Um, Saudi Arabia, actually, sorry. And picked up this guy. Cascao, um, 22-year-old Brazilian. Uh, he started his career at Palmeiras in Brazil. Um, he's gone to Saudi Arabia for 10 million. Look at this guy. Look at him. Four and a half star, 22 years of age. He looks an outstanding sign. Obviously, Pickford's going on a bit now. He's 33 years of age. Cascao's 22. What a signing that would be. 12 and a half million pounds. No brainer. 40, 40,000 pounds a week. I've looked at trying to increase our scouting knowledge, actually, because before we started this, um, these scouting assignments, where basically 
We've sent us, we've sent scouts everywhere in the world, whether that be um, Oceania, South America, North America. We've sent them everywhere to try and get the world's best talent. Um, and, you know, Cascao is a man that clearly is going to help us to reach that goal. But what a signing that would be. Just one injury, though. Marcus Edwards, as I alluded to, is out with a pulled groin. Uh, Lorenzo is injured as well. I can't remember whether, whether we saw that in the last episode. He got an injury. He was out for a few months. Um, he started well at the club, but um, he's going to have to get retrained and, and back up to fitness. And unfortunately, he's not quite there yet. So, for the game against um, Leicester, we've got Jordan Pickford in goal. We've Livramento, Almeida, Godfrey and Sanusi at back the back. Um, that back four is pretty much set now. Mason Holgate, bless him, can't get a game. Again, he's not great at right back and Almeida and Godfrey are at centre back. So unless we have a midfield crisis and say Godfrey goes into midfield, I don't know, then uh, yeah, that those four are set in that defence. We've got Viviani and Sakaria in the centre of midfield. Sam Atkinson starts at right wing because Marcus Edwards is out injured. Um, and obviously we've got the three men in the attacking midfield. Marcus Edwards was playing the, the middle of attacking midfield usually, but we haven't got that option. So Sam Atkinson... Um, is the second best choice. To be brutally honest, this man has been really disappointing this year. Um, Lewis Williams. I mean, it does say to extend his loan again. I suppose it's not a bad shout to extend his loan period. But he's played 14 games this year, got one goal. I mean, his average rating has been fairly similar. But I'd rather develop some of our other youngsters. The likes of Satona, who's playing really well recently. Um, and Reese Nelson starts up front. That seems to make sense to me. And hopefully we can get... Three points in this one. It'd be really... Yeah, I suppose we'd kind of take a point if we had to. Um, rather begrudgingly anyway. But um, Leicester have got Marco Giampolo in charge. They, sat, they um, sacked Nuno earlier on in the season. Got a lot of players they had um, at the start of the save. Pereira, they've got James Madison still. Still got Harvey Barnes. Um, Jeff Ryan Adelaide is their captain. And you'll notice our former striker, Neil Morpé. Um, is against us. So no pressure there. We are second in the form charts. I would guess that's behind um, Manchester City, uh, Manchester United, sorry, who are doing really well. They're going to win the league at a canter, I think, in the end. But Arsenal have won the championship at a canter. Um, after 41 games, they're on 104 points. Unbelievable. Really is. Um, I'd have liked them not to have come, to have not come back up, just to see what uh, would have happened, because Unfortunately, whether it's Arsenal or whoever it is in Football Manager, um, the teams that tend to go down, generally speaking, usually come back up. But that is a... I was going to say brilliant assist from Sam Atkinson. That was a dreadful shot from, from eight yards out or whatever it was from Alex Awobi. I didn't really want to play Awobi today, but who else have we got? You know, we're, we're at really crunch point in the season. We need three points and uh, Awobi just isn't cutting it. Oh, it works every time. It works every single time. Completely berate the player, say he's rubbish and say he's terrible. Sam Atkinson does it again. He gets effectively his second... Well, it should be his second assist of the game. No, he doesn't actually... Apply. Yeah, no, it is. Atkinson puts it in for a Wobie. He makes it 1-0. And, uh, yeah, we need three points today. We really do. Um, we've been struggling a bit with those draws. We Yes, we got over the line against Norwich, but that's something that doesn't happen very often with a very last-minute corner. We need to do something convincing, that's what I'm saying today. Not necessarily just beat Leicester, um, you know, sort of three each or, or two each. I don't care how, well, you don't beat someone two each, do you, idiot? But what I mean is, we want to do something that's convincing because, as I've alluded to at the start today, we've not been convincing for a while now. And we need to, the, the thing we need to go and do is, is whoop aside five or six nil. And being two nil up in the first ten minutes isn't the worst thing you can do to help that. Reese Nelson now, again, I've said this before and I'll say it again, he's a player that the media said, oh, he's not a striker, he's, you know, he'd never play him as a striker. And there was a period, to be fair, early on in the year where we put him out on the left and we put Satona up front. But um, I think having Satona on the wing and Nelson up front works better. Again, I don't care who's scoring. Satona scores when he's up front. So does um, Reese Nelson. As long as somebody's scoring, that is all that counts. Reese Nelson, though, 16 goals for the year. Top goal scorer, I think, is 22. Considering he's not a striker, he ain't doing half bad. And it's not just a one-season wonder thing either, because he did fairly well when we come into the club uh, last year. I'm a bit worried about this. Almeida hasn't really got that securely, but we're okay. Viviani, back to Godfrey. Godfrey hoofs it out to Deji Satona. Can he do something? Puts it in to Reese Nelson. It's 3-0. Unbelievable. Genuinely, I'm not, I'm not being cocky or anything. I didn't expect this. 
because Leicester did sack Nuno and they've not long appointed this new manager and they've had some decent results and I thought uh, we might have a bit of a problem here. But I guess you have the whole thing, Leicester aren't really playing for anything. You wouldn't know we uh, were going for Champions League, would you? <laughs> it's been 3 up at this point. But there have been occasions in the past where we've been 3 up and lost, believe me. Satona, though, running through on goal. Tame effort there from Deji Satona. If that's the last minute of the game and we need that to get three points, you'd have your head in your hands, wouldn't you? We're going to sit back a little bit more now and be balanced because at 3 0. I would guess we've got this game uh, nicely sewn up. But we're doing a really good job. We are doing a very good job this year. I thought we were, we'd have only been three, four points behind Liverpool. Obviously, the calculator needs to come out at some point. But we have got Liverpool next. That is why I didn't actually allude to that very much. That is why the Merseyside derby, the second match in this episode, is going to be oh so important. We're five points behind them. If we beat them, we're only two points behind Liverpool. And I don't think it's definitely not been done in game. I can't remember the last time in real life. It pains me as a Liverpool fan, but I'm a manager. I'm being paid to do as well as I can. When was the last time Everton beat Liverpool in the, in the standings? It's got to be a long time ago. But uh, we've got to get past Man City first, I suppose, in the league. That, that's one thing that we've got to do. Uh, we're freeing up comfortably at half-time. Can we make it four? Sanusi gets challenged, but Ricardo Pereira with what it has to be said is a poor clearance. Straight back to um, Wobie. Now Reese Nelson... Another tame effort, really. But to be honest, we could be 6-0 up here, given the Awobi chance earlier on, um, a tame shot from Deji Satona. I mean, the goalkeeper's not done that well. The, the, the shots he's saved, really, have been shots that have been straight at him. That's not anything against the keeper as such. You can only um, go against what y you're playing against. But even so, we should be a bit further up. But being 3-0 up, winning this game by any amount will do for me. But as I said, I'd like for it to have been... Fairly convincing. I'm going to demand more out of the players, which sounds incredibly cheeky given we're 3-0 up. But I don't care how far we are up. Players don't like that. But, you know, we should be doing better than we are. We're going to bring um, Ishmael Gutierrez on for Dennis Sakari. He's not, he's not really had a role as Ishmael this year. We've got quite a few um, midfielders, and he just hasn't really hasn't really shone, I guess. That, that's, that's one of the reasons why he's not in the side. Sicaria, Bates and Viviani have been, have been the perfect three. And uh, Gutierrez has been very much fourth choice. But we'll uh, rest a few. We've got Henry Lawrence on at the moment as well as Gutierrez. Uh, Deji Satona looks a bit tired so it might be a good idea to bring uh, Lewis Williams on. But I'll tell you what, we'll put a Wobie on the left and we'll give Russell Lee uh, 15 minutes. He's the man who we signed from Wolves for um, three quarters of a million pounds. He's had a few starts. He's not done incredibly but he's not done badly at all. You would suggest we definitely deserve to win this game. Um, after we went 3-0 up, we, we've, we've almost shut up shot a little sh Shut up shot. Shut up shop a little bit. Um, I'm not quite sure what Jeff Ryan Adelaide did there. He got plenty of time, plenty of space. But he, I mean, even if he was going to put that out as a corner, it was a bit of a pathetic effort, wasn't it? As I said, if we can keep a clean sheet here, that is what I would definitely be looking for. I think that takes Pickford on to 11 for the season. And uh, increases our goal difference. I was talking about our goal difference being quite poor. Certainly compared to some of the top sides. But with results like that, um, we, we have got a good chance of being up there. You can see with 21, it's nowhere near the likes of City and Liverpool. Uh, but I guess if it's not on goal difference, if City draw their next game, I think they've got West Brom. I might be wrong. But if they don't pick up three points, we are in at the top four on credit, but it's going to be an incredibly tough game against Liverpool next time out. Um, we are 11 matches unbeaten now. I would probably take a draw against Liverpool, but can we make it 12 matches unbeaten? Big game, this. Hands up, who clicked too many times and automatically loaded into the match? Anyone else? Whoops. Well... It was the side that beat Leicester 3-0, so it can't be half bad, I suppose. But a big match today against Liverpool. Man City haven't played their game in hand yet. They've been playing um, European football. Funnily enough, they played a game against Liverpool in the Champions League. So they've got a game today as well. But this is a biggie. Uh, we've got the same side as I alluded to going out against Liverpool. I mean, it's probably the first team side anyway, actually. I don't know whether I'd put Sam Atkinson in there. But being an Everton lad, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world to get him out there. I've just said to the lads, as you might notice, we, we lost Liverpool, obviously, last time. It was, it was only a 1-0, so it wasn't too bad. But we're at Goodison. We're doing very well. We're 11 matches unbeaten. For some reason, FM only thinks we're 10 matches unbeaten. But no, I've counted it. We are definitely 11 matches unbeaten. And I fully intend to make it 12 today. This could be huge. 
Really could be for the Premier League. It could be Liverpool finishing fifth. It could be us finishing third. It could be the start of us bottling the season. Who knows? But I think, see, it, it, I would love to go and win today. It would give me the most pleasure in the world. But if we go and lose today's match against Liverpool, it's not the end of the world. I would say that we are more than comfortable with qualifying for the Europa League, as it stands. The Champions League is just a bit of a pipe dream, given the form we've been in. But pipe dream or not, once it becomes realistic, you start getting a bit excited. But we're not really going to make Champions League if Deji Satona starts shooting straight at Alisson and he can just pick the ball up. Bit of great news between matches, though, that we have signed Cascao. I mean, he just sounds too much like Cash Cow, and I'm getting horrible reminders of the Boston Matrix in business studies, but that's something that you guys really couldn't care less about. Is it the Boston Matrix, or is it the Ansoft Matrix? I've got an A in business studies at A level. I should really know these things. Anyway, Reese Nelson's on the ball. He runs through. He's past the defenders. Have a pop. He certainly does. And Reese Nelson gets his 18th goal of the season. We lead at Goodison Park against Liverpool. In real life, I would be spitting feathers at the moment. My beloved Liverpool. You will notice I've been very crafty. I do wear my Liverpool shirts quite often. I've, I've, I've got a Hollister hoodie on. and I, I, re I regularly do now in the FM videos because I feel like I'd get absolutely shot in the comments if any of you realised I was wearing a, a Liverpool shirt under this. But to be fair today, I'm not. What am I wearing? I'm wearing a Lotus Formula 1 shirt, so you can get away with that. But I have to say, we've been the top side so far. Five shots, four of them on target. We've clearly been quite clinical. Um, it's just really been that Alisson's played quite well, actually. But there is still plenty of time for Liverpool to get into the game. No better time than now. And Yashin Mashery gets his 33rd goal of the season... He's the top scorer in the Premier League. He looks a little bit of a beast for Liverpool. And he makes it one each. I will take that because we've had more possession than Liverpool. They've been less clinical. But of course they've been a bit more now in terms of their XG. But I think if we walk away from this with a draw. I think actually both sides leave Goodison Park quite happy. I think Liverpool are sure to know our form. We're a, certainly a force to be reckoned with. I'm going to say we're not happy with that. Because we want to strive to win every match. And the players look motivated by that. Liverpool know how good we are. The way that we've got... I know we've not been playing brilliantly, but even so, I think we've been a bit harsh on ourselves. You don't go and get six unbeaten purely by luck. But Liverpool have scored. Um, Evan, Evan Ilsen must be another regen, has scored for them. As I said, it's not all over if we go and, win to, if we go and lose today's match. It's a bit of a... A sore one, losing to our rivals, and hopefully we can kick on and not let that bruise us. But I would like to get at least a point here. Um, Alex Awobi's not doing great, so we're going to bring him off. The problem is we haven't really got that much depth. We've got a few injuries. Lorenzo is the man we are crying for to come back. Um, so Lewis Bate can play in this centre attacking midfield. We've got Gutierrez, Lee. I guess Lewis Williams could come on, but yeah, I don't see the point. Martin Odegaard could finish things off here, though. But he doesn't, in fairness. It comes straight off the wall. Um, you, Machery runs back quite a bit we should really be getting this off him he hoofs it in Jordan Pickford does well enough to get to that let's see can we get a second goal can we get a goal back you've seen in, in games like Leeds and Wolves that we've got good spirit around this squad Iwobi's not come off yet he puts it into Deji Satona how does he not make that two each how does he not make that two goals each 11 shots, 8 of them on target. We're playing bloody well. We really are. It would be a shame to go and lose this one. Deji Satona comes off, I think, now for, for Lewis Williams. It only makes sense. I'm going to bring him on as an inverted winger because he's an absolute whopper as an inverted winger. We'll put Lewis Bite as a shadow striker um, and we'll push forward just a little bit, a little bit subtly. Um, we'll tell the player, we'll try and fire up the players, I guess. That might be a good idea. But if you need firing up in a Merseyside derby, then why are you playing for Everton? Fabinho puts it to Evan, whatever his name is. Livermento puts it out, but it's straight back to big VVD, virtual Van Dyke. Mo Salah over poor pass. Dennis Sicaria to Lewis Williams. He's not done great this year. Can he do something? Uh, Liverpool hoof it out, but if we keep attacking like this, we might give ourselves a chance. Williams hoofs it over to Atkinson. Reese Nelson. Atkinson! Oh, you've nearly scored in the derby. How close do you want to get? Oh, how close do you want to get? I don't know if you can tell, but I'm actually quite enjoying my time at Everton. 
I really am. It, 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 it very much helps that it's going well. That is something that always helps. But um, we are a real force to be reckoned with. We really are. Even if we go and lose today's game. Come on, Sakaria. Come on, Sakaria. Okay, let's breathe a minute. <sighs> I've been interrupted, as you might guess. At the worst time. What does Lewis Bate do here? Does he shoot and go for the far post? This feels like it could be a goal. Shall we find out? He goes for the far post. Doesn't quite work for him. This would be a real shame for us to go and not get anything out of today's game. Because we definitely deserve something, I think, out of this game. Um, you know, we have really shown at the start of this season, we were losing to these big sides. And again, we're making it too easy for Alisson. That's the one issue. We can shoot as much as we want and get shots on target. Brilliant. But, you know, our XG isn't going to rise that much, surely, um, if we're just putting shots straight to Alisson. Lovely ball, though, to Reese flipping Nelson. Oh, just put something... You know where the keeper is? Anywhere but there. Inside the two nets, though, it's not going to happen, is it? It's not going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. I'll tell you what. Klopp, has got away with one here. Really has. What can we do? Not a lot, I don't think, basically. Hoof the ball up. When we've got four minutes left, we've got nothing to lose. Put those as wing backs, I suppose. Complete wing back attack. Complete wing back attack. Again, we've got nothing to lose if Liverpool score one here. Pickford hoofs the ball out to Bate. Bate, come on, son. Hello? No penalty? Must have been a good foul. But Sakari back on the ball. Livramento, come on, please. Corner. Corner kick. Come on, Pickford. Come up the pitch. Come on, Pickford. I dare you. No? No. That's going to be the end of the match. That's gutting. That really is. 19 shots. 12 on target. 2.1 XG. Um, I'm going to outstretch my arms and say I'm really pleased with that. Sometimes... It's just not your day. The performance was excellent. It really was. It was fantastic. I mean, we were shocking, really. It's not brilliant because, yeah, I'd have liked to have gone and beat Liverpool today. But that is fantastic for the future. That just proves that we are a real force we reckon with. Pickford's playing well, but we've got a new keeper coming in. Um, he could be a brilliant keeper. City have got two games in hand. They could go three points clear of us in, in fourth. Let's have a quick butchers at who they've got left. I know we had a look at this earlier. So they've got Stoke, Crystal Palace and Chelsea. You would think they'd beat Stoke and Palace, but not necessarily Chelsea. Who have we got left? We've got Man United. That's the big problem. We've got Bournemouth, Man United, Newcastle, Sheffield United and the Villa. I think we come back. I think we do... No, we can't do a five-game special, can we? Or can we? I was thinking we'd come back for Bournemouth and United in the last three games. But, you know, if, based on the current schedule, that won't be finished till Saturday. Sod it. We'll come back tomorrow. We'll, we'll come back for a special Wednesday episode. I know I said I wasn't, but we're quite far ahead. I can do that. We'll come back tomorrow... Basically, everything else is going to be on camera. We can't miss a game, can we? We've got um, Bournemouth playing at the Medeski Stadium. God knows why. I mean, Bournemouth to Reading? Strange. Uh, Bournemouth, then Manchester United, and then we've got Newcastle, Sheffield United, and the Villa. So the last three games we'll play on Thursday's episode. As I say, we'll come back tomorrow, though, for the next two. What an episode that was. I am absolutely gutted we couldn't beat Liverpool, but that is the way the cookie crumbles, I guess, sometimes. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If you have, leave a like down below. We are going back to the normal schedule, believe it or not, now. of Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday. Um, but given that this could be quite a special season where we just about sneak Everton into the top four, I feel like you guys are entitled to see all of it. So uh, we're back tomorrow and, when, and, and Thursday sorry, for um, the final two videos of the season. Anyway, thank you for watching. I've been TIJ Gaming. Leave a like if you enjoyed and I'll speak to you guys later. Goodbye for now.